time. Good morning. Thank you for coming out and having virtual worship with us today. I am so glad you're here. A few quick notes. We're going to be trying a fun new thing this morning with uh, the pictures and videos that folks sent in. So please stay tuned. I think it will be a lot of fun for us to get to see each other and uh, sort of a new way um, for us to have community in this virtual world. Uh, with that said, this is pre-recorded, which means obviously if you got your prayers in, it may not be into me by the time I am actually filming this because this is obviously a number of days before Sunday because who knows what Sunday looks like. Um, as for the being outside, it's gorgeous outside today and I have no clue if it's going to be gorgeous on Sunday, so I figured why not come out today and uh, bring you all some nice sun, birds, clouds, and other beautiful creations of God. Anyways. If you have any prayer requests, as always, let Tina know. Uh, if there's anything else we can do for you guys, as always, let us know. Uh, I'm just so glad you're here. United families, we miss you and we hope that we'll see you soon. Bye! In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joined in Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. 
We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in the well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for, uh, for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from, from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you showered us again with the water of life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go ahead. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. Acts 6, verses 1 through 6. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For his preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 7. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold their sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This ends the first lesson.
Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. The second lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that, build, that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, and they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This ends the second lesson. The Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, but I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip. And you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you are asking me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I know right now things are sort of hard and I don't know about you, I really miss going to like the church as in the building and I miss getting to see all of you and I know my daughter really gets, really misses running around and having fun and eating the donuts and going to Sunday school and all those cool things that go around church. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I get really sad because I miss it. But God reminds us in scripture today of a really important thing. And that is our cornerstone, the thing which everything is built off of, isn't a place, it's a person. 
It's him. And the reality is God is everywhere. Which means to be the church, we don't have to go to a specific place because we believe in a specific person. So well, it is sad and goodness knows I miss you all. And I hope you guys are missing us. Know that Christ is with you, that God is with you, and you are the church because he is the cornerstone. Amen. As a millennial, um, one of the things that really marks my life, at least in relationship to the church, is that the church has been arguing about one thing or another pretty much since I was born. Um, and all those arguments that I've seen, and it's, and it's not just my generation, honestly, my parents can make the same argument, my grandparents can make the same argument, could have made the same argument. Um, all, all these arguments boil down to this idea that we as humans should be determining who gets a spot in God's house. You know, who's in, who's out, who's righteous enough, who's not, who's worshiping the right way or praying the right way or the right type of person or doing the right thing or whatever, right? We, we've been arguing about these things for so long. And then I read today's text. And what I see is Jesus going to his disciples, his disciples who are scared, his disciples who are worried, his disciples who just want to be loved on. But his disciples who have the same darn question. Now, no, their question is, am I getting in? And maybe that's your question. Um, goodness knows all of us have that question sometimes. And I just can't help but look at the beautiful response Jesus gives. He says, Thomas, Philip, don't worry. My dad's house has a ton of rooms. Stop worrying if you're going to have one. I wouldn't have told you about the rooms if I didn't have one ready for you. See, it's that moment, like that one scripture, right, that just like blows my mind. Because if we lived that, none of those arguments, none of those battles that my generation or my parents' generation or my grandparents' generation lived through make a lot of sense. Not only is it that there's a ton of rooms and God's got one there for you because God loves you and God sees you as a child and God wants to give you a giant hug and say, let me show you a room, let me show you the banquet, let me show you all the awesome things I've prepared. It's not only just that. It's a reminder to Philip, a reminder to Thomas, a reminder to all of us. It's God's house. It's not our house. We are not the owners. We are not the person who's going ahead and making the decisions about who's in or out. We are guests. You're a guest. I'm a guest. Every human is a guest. And I think when we start looking at it that way, it changes so much of what it means to be a Christian. It changes so fundamentally what it means to be us. I mean, just think about it for a moment. If I'm a guest, I don't have to worry anymore. I don't have to be like, hey, is that guest supposed to be here? Because you know what? If they're here, they're supposed to be here. And it's really just that simple. I don't have to get caught up in all the theological and ethical and political minutia of the world because that's God's job, not mine. God's the owner. It's God's house. If he's got a room, then he's got a room. If we're just guests, it's not our place to say you don't belong here. But this doesn't leave us doing nothing. This doesn't leave us having nothing to say or nothing to do. We're not just at a sandals resort basking in the sun, no matter how much we want to in the middle of a Wisconsin spring. 
What it reminds us is that the core of what we do as Christians is to love each other, to care for each other, to remind everyone the same truth that God spoke today, which is there is a room in God's house for you. Yeah, you, even the one right there, you know, who's listening five days later on YouTube or Facebook, you. God loves you. He has a room for you. No matter your thoughts, no matter where you are in your life, God loves you that much. So what do we do as Christians in response to that love? What do we do? Well, A, we take joy in it, but B, it reminds us that at the core of being a Christian, at the core of what it means to have Christian love for others, at the core of what it means to be like Christ, is hospitality, is standing up and welcoming everyone, welcoming our friend, our stranger, our enemy, all the same. Hospitality isn't something that gets shoved to the side in Christianity. Hospitality isn't something that we laugh off. Hospitality isn't that thing that that other person does today or tomorrow. Hospitality is core to Christian love and to who we are because it was core, or it is core to our God. As you go out this week, take just a few moments and ask yourself, how can you show that same love and hospitality for the people you see today, tomorrow, and the next? God bless all of you. God loves you. And never forget, God has a room for you. Forever. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Pray today, O oh Lord, for all those affected by the coronavirus. We pray especially for the developing world, in particular for Ecuador and Brazil. We also pray for Southeast Asia as they desperately attempt to deal with the fallout from the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray today for all who are suffering or ill in any way. We pray especially for Wayne, Francine, Vicky, Barb, Elaine, Jim, Marcella, Lucila, Marlene, Wendy, Ron, Betty, Sophie, Randy, Dale, Tom, Darlene, Chris, Amira. We also pray for all those who grieve, especially Keith Potters as he grieves his mother, Melissa Reyes at the death of her uncle, and Gordon Krause at the death of his sister. We pray for all those who have died or are ill, spoken or unspoken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we forever remember that at the heart of who we are is hospitality to those who are like us, but also those who are not. We pray that we always remember that we are called to this hospitality in all that we do and in every part of our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that remember in this time apart that you are our cornerstone, that you are the cornerstone of the church, and therefore, we have nothing to fear about being away from our building, even if we have things to mourn. Because we know that we are not the church canceled, we are the church deployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May our prayers rise like incense before you today and every day. Amen.
Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought us forth, Jesus from the dead, raise you a new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.